Hey, my name is uh, Baptist Church family. This is Pastor Daniel. Thank you so much for clicking on the meandering this morning. Wow, it's hard to believe it's Friday, only one week before we launch for the second year in a row the live nativity to the glory of God. What an amazing blessing, a gift that he has given us that we can um, just be a part of expressing the great joy and the great news that comes with the birth of the Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the reason for this season. Thank you so much, and thank you seems far too small to all of you who have worked so hard with the buildings and the construction and the props and the costumes. Uh, we have so many volunteers. It has just been a, a powerful overflow of uh, generosity from God's people. And so bless you. Thank you. We're excited. Continue to pray that, uh, again, everything will come together and we will experience ourselves the great joy of being on mission with Jesus here in the valley. And that lots of uh, food for the food bank um, is collected and that people who receive our invitations. And uh, this year we've got these beautiful gospel tracts around the candy cane story that we want to give to all the cars. Now, the church for years have heard perhaps that story, but you can imagine that powerful story going out to many homes that have never heard the story of the candy cane and the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're excited about that. Thank you again for all your hard work. Let's continue to roll. The momentum is really building only one week. We're also exciting, excited about the uh, refugee family. All the plans, preparations, and prayers seem to be coming together. Our team, again, has done a phenomenal job. And we're looking forward at midnight this coming Tuesday to uh, see them safely land here in Nova Scotia out of the uh, less than ideal conditions in the refugee camp there in Turkey. And so, uh, again, thank you for all your prayers, all your help and participation. And again, a huge help. Thank you to our team. Also, of course, we have uh, Advent beginning this Sunday. We have more baptisms this Sunday. We're excited about that. And we've had lots of uh, inquiry in regards to the event Sunday night, the Truth and Love event. Now, basically, that is, revolves around uh, our series in Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, Jesus' word to the seven churches, and how it's stirred up in our hearts. Right from the beginning, the church has always been challenged and struggled with remaining faithful to the name of Jesus and his gospel when the culture uh, around them uh, pressure them into compromise and... Uh, Churches are either, right, again, right from the birth of the church, uh, some have shown to be very strong on doctrinal purity at the expense of uh, leaving off lovingly engaging their culture around them with the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Others have been all about uh, being involved in the community, um, showing the love of God, but have allowed the power of the gospel to be dispensed with or watered down to the point where it's no longer even powerful. And so this has been the tension in the church uh, for, for many years. And then all along, of course, the evil one will take the ideologies and the philosophies of the world um, that are not all bad. I mean, we're all made in God's image. But a lot of the thinking of the world along the lines of sexuality or family relations, money, power, politics, um, those presuppositions, those ideas get planted uh, in the church and therefore, it undermines, supplants in the church a passion to be on mission with Jesus as salt and light in the world. And uh, so that's another part of our struggle. So the, what will be the, the crux, if you will, of the discussions that we hope to have on Sunday night? Well, how is it then? This is a big question. How can we encourage a renewal of believing in the power of the saliency of the gospel and that it then outwardly flows in love to the culture around us, in our neighborhoods, in our workplace, in our schools, in our families whom we love. Now, the tension in, in the, has only cultivated an awkward silence. And by our silence, things have only gotten darker. So we can afford to remain silent no longer. So the least we can do is have open, respectful, prayerful dialogue and to begin to talk about it openly. Um, within our church family, to affirm the gospel of Jesus Christ and its importance in our daily lives. And then we want to talk about how we can have gospel-centered conversations 
and how we can do that in a very whimsical, respectful, and loving way without compromising the truth of the gospel. This is a huge challenge. There are no easy answers, but we hope that it will help spark more conversations in your individual sphere of influence, and God loves to work through our obedience to share his love. And so we're going to talk about that. We are so grateful uh, for the generosity of Dr. Anna Robbins, who's a very busy woman. Her expertise, her wisdom, and uh, educational um, accomplishments, really, around this topic of uh, contemporary culture and faith. We are blessed to have her as a part of our uh, Canadian Baptists in Atlanta, Canada. We are blessed that she is, uh, has an integral leadership role in Acadia Divinity College, and that she would come and begin our Advent series, where it's uh, uh, messengers of Advent, where the angel appears before Zechariah, and uh, she's going to begin that series for us Sunday morning, and then Sunday night at 6.30, she will have give her presentation on contemporary faith and culture, set the table, if you will, so that we can then have an open discussion panel on that panel. We have uh, Dr. Danny Zacharias, who's a colleague of uh, Anna Robbins. We have uh, Andrea Pierce, who works with the InterVarsity Christian Fellowship among the students. And we have uh, Colleen DeLong, who uh, teaches in the area of communications. And is she and John DeLong, of course, help teach um, in our own church. They're passionate about this issue, uh, being prepared to give an answer for our faith. We have Pastor John Dixon, who, of course, works widely with uh, young adults and uh, youth in this area and helping families to be equipped and to... Uh, give a response uh, in regards to those who will ask about our faith. And we have, um, who else do we have on that panel? Jeremy Bass. Jeremy will be um, as a chair of our Board of Governance. And Jeremy, I know, is passionate about this as well, that the church uh, be able to wholeheartedly be able to give a reason for our faith to all those who uh, Jesus is sending us out to engage uh, in the culture around us. Lastly, I just want to say, I mentioned a few Sundays ago about a Canadian author, Anne Voskamp, uh, mostly known for her first book, A Thousand Gifts, How We Can Live uh, Eucharist Deo Before God in a Thankful Way for Everything That He Brings to Us, Including the Hard Times. And her new book is uh, centered around brokenness, but she has a blog. It's simply Anne Voskamp, A-N-N. Uh, v O S K A M P dot com and Voskamp, no E and N. And uh, recently, she, I think November 22nd, posted a, a blog in regards to a refugee family that they have coming uh, to their church. And uh, it's a beautiful, touching blog. Uh, shout out to Laurel Jameson for uh, highlighting it for us. And I trust it'll be a blessing to you. Well, that's a lot to share with you this morning. There is a lot going on. And I just, uh, Thank God that uh, we're privileged as pastors to be able to journey along at New Minds Baptist Church with such a loving church family. Bless you today.